I, it's been a while since I got to say that. So. I know. Uh, that was embarrassing. Oh. I mean, yeah. What did you think? How do you, how do you guys address? I mean, obviously, uh, uh, Coach uh, Meyer was in here earlier about the tackling. I mean, you know, basically, so many yards came on like four or five plays and stuff. But what do you address this week? That, you know, uh, with your guys, et cetera, in practice, what do you do different? Uh, I mean, the, the address is going to be a whole lot different. I mean, we, you know, we know we want to be a sound football. Yeah. That's the number one thing um, that, that uh, we stress defensively and, and leverage the football. I mean, there's the two things that are in the core values of what we do, um, and, and those are the things that, that we aren't seeing. So, uh, you know, we got to reevaluate how we how we go about practicing that, how we go about um, doing some of those things. We, we need to get some some different looks, uh, but it all starts with leveraging the football. Right? When you looked at the video, was it a couple of times a couple of guys freelancing a little bit, or was it just guys missing, or how yeah. would you describe it? Believe me, I laid awake Saturday and night trying to uh, watch that thing if everybody else in the house sleeps. Um, and and, and I, I couldn't pinpoint one exact thing. You could say guys had it, guys rap, guys this, guys that, but um, the only thing I can see is that, you know, there it's not a lack of effort. Now, is it fundamentally sound in what we're doing? No. When a guy slips out the backside for 81 yards, there's nothing fundamentally sound about it. Now, did three guys have it? Yeah, okay. But you know, we just got to reevaluate. We got to make sure we're, we're continuing to stress the things that we, we're, we're supposed to do. Um, and on those plays, you know, you find out, you know, not that we're pointing a finger to have any blame, because that's the one thing we don't do defensively, but we got to figure out structurally what is the problem. And um, pretty much it comes down to some leverage. And the two things that I see is that we got to make the ball go east and west, and then we've got to have leverage on the football. Okay, the two big runs, the one was kind of straight downhill, where we na never made the guy deviate, mm -hmm. you know. Yeah. And then the other one was he goes east and west, and then we don't edge it up. So um, it, it's a fundamental thing that uh, I promise you we're going to stress again this week. Rusty? Uh, Luke, not a lot of effort. Is there, are there times where they're over east, the guys overcompensate, go too quickly and pull a run? That's, I mean, I don't know if that, uh, the, we're not going to use it as an excuse, but sometimes, you know, the, the, the stress of, hey, we're going as fast as we possibly can from point A to point B, um, it is our mantra, and uh, we're not going to take that away, but we still have to do that with understanding of where point B is, and uh, we can't lose sight of that. As hard as you go, and as, as much energy as you have, and as much emotion as you have, you still can't lose sight of the, the base fundamentals of what you do. Now, you have to be able to do them with, with great energy and great effort, and Point A to point B, knowing exactly where point B is. Key. Back right, Matt. Uh, Coach Matt Evans of EHSD. Storm Klein played a good bit on Saturday. Do you guys expect him to play that much, and have you had a chance to evaluate how he played? What's a good bit? I. There were 84 snaps on defense, so I think he played eight. Is that a good bit? Well, between defense and special teams, I don't know. Okay, I that's right. He had a couple more kickoffs, so that was 12. So, <laughs> defining what good bit is. No, is he going to continue to play more? Yeah. You know, we got to get him back into the mix some more. And, and Storm's played a lot of football here. Uh, he started every game last year. So uh, this team needs him. We need him. Um, but we're going to continue to, to put the best 11 guys out there we can. And I think uh, the two middle backers, him and Curtis Grant, Curtis played maybe 12 or 14. And I think Storm played eight. So uh, not a big bit. We need to be actually more fit. Austin, right front. Austin Ward, ESPN.com. Luke, it seems like there have been different themes from all three games for the defense. It was secondary breakdowns week one and you needed more pressure after game two. Have you felt as a coordinator that there have been different things popping up in every game that you have to correct moving forward early in the season? Uh, I mean, every week you're going to have a little something different. Uh, you know, we're still obviously new in what we're doing. Not that we've changed a ton, um, but it's sometimes, like I think Rusty said it best, it's, sometimes you're uh, so aggressive. I've never heard that. Before. I don't usually say that. I, I just, let me rephrase that. So, somebody, I mean, somebody put it in the right way. Um, that sometimes when, when you're over aggressive, things can happen. So, um, I, I think we just got to make sure we continue to understand what we're doing, why we're doing it, play fundamentally sound, um, and, and don't make a habit of, of it being, you know, every week you can make an excuse and say, well, man, if you just take away three runs, they only have X amount of yards. Well, you know what? You can't take away those three runs. The only way you can is to play better. So is there an exact thing? Is it each and every week? Is it something we're focused on? No, I just think that it's making sure we understand what our fundamentally we're doing, um, playing sound, uh, but still playing with that great effort and energy. So that would be you know, maybe normal for a coach to go week to week, having one thing he's trying to emphasize 
based on what happened on Saturday? I mean, we still are going to emphasize things, but we're not going to lose the sight of the, we're going to do what it is we do. Uh, that doesn't mean we're going to try and shove a round peg in a square hole or anything. Uh, we have to be able to adapt and, and change to, to the people we have and the things that, you know, are going to hurt us. But, um, you know, we're going to play, make sure we understand that we got to play with great fundamentals. MAs are the things that ultimately end up hurting you, whether that's a missed tackle or a missed assignment. And, uh, you know, that's the things we've got to clear up, whether it's in the back end, in the front end, in the, in wherever. They're all tied together, you know. There's a lot of times, you know, you blame the coverage on the first week, but, you know, if you hit that quarterback and, and, and he doesn't get the ball off, you know, that lack of coverage wasn't wasn't exposed as much. So uh, that's why we all stay together. That's why we all work together. And they're all, uh, all phases of the game, running, passing, all that stuff is... is you know, you don't pinpoint and just point a finger at anybody in that room. John, Biddle, look, you guys uh, blitzed more last week than we've seen recently. Did that after seeing the film open up more big play opportunities? How many times? <laughs> Storm played eight. How many times did you blitz? The exact number I don't know. Okay. Right. Well, no, no, we, no we, we did a little bit. I mean, we, you know, we knew we had to be aggressive. Um, you know, we got to do a better job of that. Uh, but I think that what that does is it still allows you to open up some of your other things. You know, I mean, it wasn't like every sack or every pressure uh, was a blitz, you know. But when you do them a little bit more, now they're they're looking for them, and now it gives those three guys, or those four guys that are rushing the chance. So, uh, you know, sometimes we're hard on those guys. You didn't get any pressure, you didn't get pressure. Well, you know, sometimes if we don't make an offense, you know, not know exactly what's coming, then, uh, we don't give those guys up front an opportunity to actually get pressure. So, uh, like I said, that's why all those things tie together. Did we come a little bit more? Yeah. Did we come a little more aggressive? Yeah. Are you going to take the good with the bad with some of those? Yeah, and I think that's you know, that's the thing we got to find a good balance. Far left, Matt. Uh, Matt, what is the mood of a defensive coach, coaches, uh, and your defensive players after a game like Saturday? Uh, I mean, obviously, it's a friendly win. You got one turnover at the end of the game to seal the game, but you know, they had 512 yards. Was there, you know, <coughs> I think the one thing is, is I think Coach Meyer's done a great job of, not that we didn't do in the past, is, is to enjoy victory. And uh, as I start to mature a little bit, uh, I say a little bit, um, <laughs> my wife tries to remind me to, to be grateful and thankful. I mean, there, there's a lot of guys that, uh, and a lot of times when those things wouldn't have come up your way. So, uh, A, it starts with, hey, we're going to coach them hard. It's a lot easier to coach them harder uh, when they came away with a win because they still feel like it's all right. They're, they're good about themselves. They're still 3-0. and We're 3-0. And that's the ultimate goal. So, um, does it hurt? Yeah. Does, does it, is there a knot in the bottom of my stomach? Yeah. Did, did I lay in bed watching the game on Saturday night instead of the other games? Yeah. Um, but that's kind of been always been that attitude here. We're never satisfied. If it would have been uh, 10 points, I'm sure it would have been something that I'd been sitting there you know, worried about. Like, wow, we had a chance to have our hands on the ball there or missed a tackle here. Or, um, you know, so that never satisfied attitude where uh, you know, it helps you to really – fight through and continue to get better. Sometimes isn't always the best way to live, but uh, you know, I guess that's what uh, what you get when you're a part of this. Last question in here, Rusty. Uh, two part. First of all, I don't. I won't say that you were right. Again. Okay, good. I don't think we ever asked you this, but despite the circumstances that you served under, did you enjoy being a head coach last year? And what did you take from it? <sighs> well, I mean. I, I guess that was my first time being a head coach, and when you talk to some of the guys, some of the great things about being a head coach is the off season, where you maybe set a schedule, or you get to do this, or you know maybe there's a Nike trip of some sort. Or um, I'm not sure that <laughs> I got to experience some of those uh, real joyful things. Um, coach Withers and I talk about it all the time. Those head coaches go, they go on the uh, the Nike tour. You know, they go and there's where they take them to Hawaii or whatever. We were going to go on a pony tour. Pony went out of business, I think, a few years ago. So we were going to, we were going to get together and go down to the, uh, the casino down there in Cincinnati or something, get on the boat and, and do our own little one-day tour. But, uh, we didn't get to probably enjoy it as much as, as the rest, but uh, nonetheless, it was a great experience. It was uh, you learn a lot about yourself and learn a lot about others, and um, you know who the who really has your back and, and how people react and respond in situations. And if and when you become a head coach again, do you think that'll be helpful to you, what you went through in that one year? There's no doubt. You, you can't get that experience anyplace. Um, you know, even talking to those guys that were in some situations that they took over in, um, all the advice they gave me, this, that, the other thing, to, to actually do it is, it, it is tenfold. And, uh, you know, so someday it'll pay off. Is it
Does it make you more aware of what the head coach wants? I think he said Clay. Yeah. <laughs> Clay, sorry. Yeah, yeah. Just, yeah. Appreciate that. Uh, you served a lot of years with John Peterson. He comes in here uh, Saturday with a different shirt. It's part of his business. Uh, how do you? Will it be good to see him? How do you think he's feeling about that? I don't get out there a whole lot before the games. And I'm not a real social person, um, but I know my wife and his wife uh, are very, very good friends. And, and Stay in contact. I'm, that's probably the worst thing about what I do. I don't stay in contact with a lot of guys really, really all that well. Uh, maybe it's the time constraints and things, but um, got the utmost respect for, for, for John and his entire family and what a person he is. And um, I know it'll be it'll be you know interesting for him to come back in here too. But uh, obviously, I look forward to seeing him um, probably briefly. Uh, but then uh, we usually talk after. I don't mean right after the game. I mean a day or so later because just by nature of you know, uh, what goes on. Yeah. All right, Tim, go ahead. Last oh, no, you started just, it, you might as well. Yeah. I, was just, I was just going to follow on the rest of the question there. It, did it make you more aware, though, of what a head coach wants to hear? You know what I mean? When you were uh, from, from assistants, et cetera, did it, it give you more of an appreciation for, for, from that aspect? I mean, you, you got a lot of different insights. Um, I think the one thing that you realize is, is when you're going to do it, you've got to do it your way. I think that's you know, yeah. one of those things that not being around a whole lot of different people that uh, you don't know that there's a whole bunch of different ways. So, um, you know, in the circumstances and how you can really do it, could you really do it the way you really like to? Uh, you know, that, that's for another day. Um, but like I said, you can't get some of those experiences uh, just reading about it or just seeing it or trying to study it. To, to actually do it uh, is, uh, you know, it, it is invaluable. Thanks. Hey, buddy. Thank you, Tommy.